So here we are, the very first Airbus A321 to be assembled in the United States. It's at the Wing Join station here in Mobile, Alabama. And this is the second position inside the factory, inside the final assembly line. This plane is a JetBlue A321, so it'll be delivered in early or mid uh, 2016, sometime in quarter two of 2016. And it's uh, at the second stage here, this is wing join. The first stage, which you saw earlier, is the fuselage join, where they put the pieces of the tube together and put some of the galley and lavatory bits inside. At this position here, we're putting the wings on, oops, sorry, uh, putting the wings on and also the main landing gear and a few other things. Uh, you can see, or maybe you can, but right now the wing is not yet attached. Um, it will be in the next few days, hopefully. Um, one of the interesting things about this facility is uh, there's been a lot of Almost everything is copied from either Hamburg or Tianjin, but this one has some new features as well, uh, specifically regarding the wing join. They've automated some of the processes to handle drilling all the holes for the rivets, and that's a huge deal because there are 1,200 rivets for each wing to be attached to secure it onto the main fuselage body. Um, once the wings are attached, the landing gear will also be installed. You can see right up here on the nose uh, is a spot for landing gear. There's also a space up by the wing joints for the main landing gear under the center of the fuselage. And from there, it will also be powered on and then towed to the next station, which is behind me here. I'll turn around in a second. And that is where the uh, tail fin is attached and other, uh, you know, other bits of the assembly continue. There's actually two more stations inside factory here and then the next step after this um, let's turn around I can show you the tail attachment there's your tail spot uh, how many will it hold this site can handle four aircraft inside at a time uh, the plan is to get to uh, a pace of four per month uh, that'll happen by the end of 2017 so a bit of time before we get there but they expect to ramp up to four per month and Airbus has also said that if things are going well and they need to increase production here, that with a few small modifications, they can get up to eight per month. And that's not necessarily putting more inside here, but it's doing things like uh, working a third shift and sort of speeding up some of the processes of shipping hardware over from Europe. So uh, there are, like I said, there are four stations inside, uh, outside after the uh, job finishes, uh, they pull it into a paint hanger, and then there's a gauging hanger where they test things like making sure the fuel tanks don't leak, and then finally it goes into the delivery hanger in the delivery center across the way. And hopefully uh, you'll see some photos of that in a bit on my Twitter feed, and also I'll be walking around a bit later and can get out there and show you that here on Periscope. Um, someone asked, is it a rolling assembly line? No, it is not. They call it a flow line. so. A plane sits in one position, does its thing, and then moves on to the next one. And they, the first, moving from one to two is done through cranes, and you can see them there, these massive cranes, the yellow bars hanging from the ceiling. Uh, after that, it gets onto the floor, and at position two here, it'll be on its own landing gear. Uh, I'm media, I'm here covering the event for Runway Girl Network, uh, just happened to be Happy to be in town, and the media embargo has just been lifted, so this is the first look everybody's getting inside. Hey, you better believe it. Uh, this ship is, like I said before, uh, a JetBlue A321. It's MSN 6512. Um, it is uh, a couple questions there. How many jobs? They say 250 to 260 to start is where they're at right now for direct employment. They also expect that a whole bunch of additional jobs are going to be joined up to the group. Um, sort of indirectly through other companies showing up and providing supply and support services. Um, 
The initial number they expect is about 1,000 high-paying manufacturing jobs here in the region as this ramps up. Uh, aircraft fly 25 to 35 years as long as they're maintained. Uh, some go away quicker, but these expect to be operating for a long, long time. And someone else asked a question, and I don't remember what it was because it scrolled by too quickly, and I apologize. Um, yeah, 6512 here is a JetBlue plane, uh, likely to be the Mint product which is their premium transcon service supplies from JFK to Los Angeles and San Francisco. Ah, and uh, how long start to finish? That was the question I missed. Thanks, Race Rocket. Uh, when they are fully up to speed, it'll be about 20-something days in the hangar here to go start to finish. Uh, right now, they're nowhere close to that. Uh, there's a lot of additional overhead and work involved in sort of configuring and testing and making sure and certifying everything so that as they go through the processes every bit gets inspected extra to make sure that it's working correctly. But, uh, this aircraft that you're seeing right, it's uh, September now, it'll go to first flight sometime in uh, quarter one of next year so it's still 60 some odd days away, 45 to 60 days away and then it'll be delivered a couple months after that. And yes, um, the goal is eventually to get up to one per week or four per month delivery. Uh, and like I said, they can ex they can increase that if they need to uh, through some other efforts, but right now that's the play. More than you've got. Uh, list prices on jets are kind of hard to know. Um, there's list price and then there's what everybody actually pays. Um, What's the pay for the employees? You know, I have no idea. They didn't tell us that. Um, and I didn't apply for a job. I do know that the jobs are apparently in pretty high demand. They had something like 100 to 1 uh, applicants to people they were able to hire. So they were going to get, uh, and they hope to grow it and get a lot more people working here. Uh, someone asked, where am I? This is Mobile, Alabama, uh, down on the Gulf Coast. Um, not a hundred million. I think list price on these, you, you can probably look it up online. Obviously, I can't because I'm doing this and talking to you. But if you do list price, Airbus A320, um, I think it's probably 60 million, 70 million, and then they pay a discount off of that rate when an airline buys it. This is the A321, so it's the longest and largest. And you can tell, among other things, there's two doors up here forward of the wing, one sort of right in the middle of the shot and one off to the right. Um, but this is uh, the largest of the A320 family. This factory can uh, produce 320s, 319s, which is the smaller version, and 321s, which is the larger version. And initially they thought it was going to be mostly 320s, and it turns out that the 321 is incredibly popular right now. So 321s it is. The first two planes in here are 321s, and they expect that most of the future deliveries out of here, maybe not most, but many of the uh, next few will all be 321s coming out of here. go for a walk again here. So this plane can hold uh, up near 200 passengers depending on the layout. Uh, the JetBlue, JetBlue has two different configurations with the 321. Uh, one is all economy class and is about 180 seats. Uh, the other one has uh, a business class section up in the front and then you know economy in the back and that's down around 160, 165. Um, if you get a super high density version and like a low cost carrier in Europe or something like that, it, I think it can get up over 200, but it's uh, a lot of bodies inside, but generally pretty comfortable. Airbus likes to brag that their planes are a little wider than the comparable Boeing planes, so the seats are, uh... oh, good to know, 110 million, so there you go. That's less price, but like I said, it's, it'll be less to buy uh, if you're an, actually an airline. Uh, but uh, like I said, Airbus is uh, a wider seat than Boeing has, so they claim it's a little more comfortable. Um, they're probably right, wider is nice, uh, but you know, legroom matters too, so part of that comes down to how many seats the airline squeezes in. It's, it's hard to get a sense of scale of just how big airplanes are, um, but you know. The ladders going up to it and things like that can sort of help you figure it out. They are massive, massive objects. And it's 
a lot of fun to be standing out here on the assembly line floor underneath them, experiencing it from the outside as opposed to the inside like you normally do when you're flying. Hi, Paul. Uh, <laughs> there are, can I show us the inside? No, the insides are off limits right now. Um, the assembly process doesn't, uh, doesn't have anything inside really until uh, further down the line. And so before they get the seats and everything else in, there's no way to get inside. And then also, just because of the way this tour is set up, uh, you can't get inside. Um, there are about, of those 14,000, or I think it's 12 something uh, firm orders, there are about 5,000 still yet to be delivered. And that's a mix of old and new, you know, sort of going out for the next decade or so. And you know, the, this is what they call the CEO or classic or current engine option. Uh, there's also the NEO, N-E-O, and that's a new engine option. Those will also be assembled here in Mobile. Um, that's a couple years down the line yet, though. Uh, the NEO option gets you 15% uh, greater fuel efficiency or 15% more range, depending on how the airline chooses to use it. But that'll be sort of the next round of updates. This is one of three final assembly lines. The other ones are in Hamburg, Germany, and Tianjin, China. And then now Mobile, Alabama is joining that party. Um, this is final assembly. So this is sort of where they take all the components that come in from various different manufacturers and push them all together. Uh, the number of factories involved in producing all the components, you know, the fuselage, the wings, the tail fin, the stabilizers, all of those bits uh, is much, much higher. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, more than just these three final assembly plants, but at the end of the day, the goal with these final assembly plants is to get, you know, up to, I think, 60 or so planes a month rolling out. Um, so it's going to be a whole lot of aircraft moving. And the majority will still come from Hamburg. Uh, Tianjin will ramp up. Obviously, there's a lot of demand for aircraft in China. And Airbus sees also significant demand for aircraft out of North America. The, uh, the, I'm sorry, yeah, with the North America plants uh, coming online, there's a lot of orders from American Airlines, from JetBlue, from Delta, um, and uh, Hawaiian Airlines has some on order as well. There's a lot going on there. So a lot of new aircraft to be delivered within the Americas, and these are going to be uh, coming out all mostly delivered from here. There's not sort of strict rules about it. Uh, all the ones manufactured here in Mobile will be delivered in America, or uh, North America. Air Canada may get some. Um, none of the planes manufactured in Tianjin will come to the North America, at least not for initial deliveries. And some may be still manufactured in Hamburg and sent onward here to North America. Ah, Toulouse also. Thank you. Um, so there's the fourth line. Um, but yeah, Mobile is the, uh, the latest to join. But you know, a little bit interesting that Tianjin planes won't be sold to North American customers, at least initially. Sort of pan around here. So gorgeous, huge building and. Interestingly, you can see some lights sort of along the sides here, but a lot of natural light. There's a lot of skylights up across the ceiling, uh, sort of all the way around, and that helps keep it a nice, bright space here, even though they're, you know, LEED certified, so they try not to use too much power and all that other good stuff. Alrighty then. Well, my arms are getting tired holding this thing, so I'm going to shut it down now, but uh, I'll probably be back later.